Hello everyone, it's Monster Hammer Lubbock coming at you with another Monster Hammer video. This time we're looking at the Gremlin Tales Kickstarter, which just launched today, if I'm not mistaken. And um, yeah, we're going to see what it has to offer, give you guys a little bit of an overview of the Kickstarter. So, for those of you who doesn't know, Gremlins Tales is a monster taming game with unique combat, monster riding, exploration, and fairy tale monster designs. This here is just a uh, trailer that we've already explored in a previous video, but I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter in case you want to watch that yourself. For the story, Gremlins Tale is a strategic action RPG where you befriend, train, and explore with all fairy tale inspired monsters. These creatures, called gremlins, are magically created creatures bound to loops of fate based on their story origin. They become your friends, fight at your side, and grow throughout your journey with you. You'll be able to write your own tale together. Gremlin's Tale, at its core, is about taking monster taming and cranking the depth of its monsters and mechanics to the extreme. What gives it depth? Its conceptually complex fairy tale spun monster designs, its unique real-time combat, and the diverse ways to explore the world through individual individually unique gremlin riding mechanics it's a monster taming game we dream of since we were kids and this is what it looks like you can see a brief little tidbit here and yes there is a um demo out right now that you can get on steam the gremlins let's begin with what makes this game great the gremlins themselves as stated all the gremlins have fairy tale origins everyone knows the frog prince right frog gets a gold ball for a girl frog kisses girl turns out frog was prince all alone and then here you get frog gold the frog prince gremlin notice the golden ball bubble on its bag its princely crown and the frothy bubbly royally collar Gremlins will be full of design elements like this to echo their story inspiration. Gremlins themselves have are sentient and have their own thoughts, feelings, and words say in the game's dialogue. See, as you can see, various things about, you know, hogs are all talking here. To emphasize personality, sentient creatures, let's go over the game's starter designs you'll get to choose from. Instead of your typical grass, fire, water triangle, Gremlins' starter trio is based on types of brawn, brain, and beauty, with its might, mental, and charm type starters. Yeah, Beast Tame, the my type starter. Beast Tame is based on Beauty and the Beast. His personality is that of a proper young gentleman. He sets aside his natural beastly nature to be as pip pip cheerio as he can. Hopefully, all this suppression doesn't hurt him when he goes up. Dare Dumpty is the mental type starter. Dare Dumpty is based on Humpty Dumpty. Its personality is that of a thrill seeking, hoverboarding daredevil. Their Dumpty knows how to fall, uh, how frail its outer shell really is. It's psychic genius egg, after all, and that is dangerous to hover on bricks. It also subscribes to the teachings of YOLO. <laughs> You'll see the gremlin talking to you like if you're a surfer, bro, unless the damage it takes eventually gives it a change of heart. And you get Ginger Kid. It's a charm type starter. Ginger Kid is based on the gingerbread man. You know, the hyper kid, more hyped up on sugar than you think humanly possible with a tiny butter body? That's Ginger Kid. He's always on a sugar rush because he's made of sugar. He's obsessed with being a superhero when he grows up, but he'll learn that being a superhero isn't all fun and games. And you can see there are various uh, evolutions there. Their personalities visually, visibly change through evolution. Mono Servant developed a still growing evil beastly hand syndrome from the suppression of its nature. Care falls, becomes scared of getting hurt after its bad wipeout exposing its eggy leggings. And now it props itself onto the wall to stay away from the oh so dangerous ground. A ginger snap lost his arm. I guess being a superhero isn't so sweet after all. Hope he has insurance. <laughs> and then here is just a brief spat of some more gremlins that we can just scroll through here. You can pause it and read about each of them if you like. Here's all type icons. Might, charm, mental, arcane, blight, evil, death, ice, water, earth, life, wind, electric, and fire. Type charts is balanced one to one, which means that each type has an even number of positive and negative individual map subs with other types. Here we can see the attacking types on the left rows and the defending types on top nice and balanced. I really like the idea of a one-to-one -one balance, personally. I never liked it, how some types are kind of objectively better than others, with like how their balance works anyways. And you can take a good look at here, pause it, and look as much as you like. The combat. In Gremlin's Tale is all about openness and depth. In the game, you'll have your monsters out about anywhere. And they'll interact directly with the world. Strategic real-time battles will happen seamlessly, and the world space itself will break down how you fight. 
and Gremlin's Tale. Gremlin's Tale, uh, Gremlin's takes an open, real-time approach to make combat and the world interactions unique from your typical turn-based monster games like Pokemon. In Gremlin Tale, you will have to order multiple Gremlins around at once in real time, blending strategy with action. When there are up to five of your own Gremlins and five enemy Gremlins plus a trainer on each side, it can get quite hectic. Let's add cooldowns to the mix. Stats, cooldowns, abilities, and team building. Gremlin's Tale, Gremlin's stats will grow and change based on the stats for each Gremlin as you level up a battle experience. On top of this, you get some direct control over their stats. Every level you get two investment points. You can invest in any stat you want. Each Gremlin of yours can have up to two cooldowns equipped at once. Some of these with synergistic static abilities. You get two cooldowns and two static abilities. You can equip and unequip whenever outside combat. I like that. I like how you get to upgrade people as you level up. And here's just some examples. These cooldowns and abilities come in many types including dashes dodges bashes buffs projectiles lobs tornadoes aoe explosions and much more and you can activate these at whim um, at will and to aim and let their system do the auto aim for you if you press and release quickly your gremlins ai will sometimes activate these themselves to alleviate some of the cognitive load of controlling them all speaking of ai the last piece of our deep combat and team building puzzle Gremlins features three main AI, main AI strategies types for your gremlins, and they will determine how your gremlins fight when you're too busy to order them out yourself. You can customize the AI strategy for your gremlins, though it may be best to do so in a particular strategy naturally. So we have a bruiser type. This strategy will make a gremlin defend its ground near its trainer at all costs. Whenever an enemy gremlin comes close or hits it, this gremlin will fight back instantly and get to the brawl. The gremlins with this AI strategy make good death ball to run at the opponent and to bodyguard you. The Assassin is the faster Gremlin is meant to take out a specific target, like a healer or an enemy trainer. Gremlins with this AI strategy will ignore their perception and damage from the enemies, other than the specific targets ordered by you. So if you don't order them around, they won't do anything, but they won't get distracted when you do. And then the Ranged. The Ranged AI causes the Gremlin to make use of magic stat when it's basic attacks instead of using its attack. The Gremlin will basic attack from a range, and when threatened, will run until they have favorable distance and continue shooting. This strategy can be good for sniping the last bits of damage on enemy trainer or distracting and whittling down strong and slow gremlin. These AI strategies were designed to counter each other slightly, but with stat management and execution, they really make or break a matchup. Bruiser has an advantage against Assassin. Assassin has it against ranged and ranged against Bruisers. Circle of Life, it's also a light form of rock, paper, scissors. Pretty cool. I'm liking how unique the combat is. And... But wait, there's more. You can punch gremlins. I mean, five alongside. Remember how I said the game plays sort of like Pikmin? That's also because you control your player more directly and simultaneously to your gremlin ordering. Your character controls like a third-person perspective game with control sticks or Bosdy keys to move. You'll even be able to dodge rolling like your soul-sized rooms depend on it. There are no soul-sized rooms in this game. That was just a very funny joke. With full-on action controls, all of these units to control, there's a good reason... Good thing there's a slow-mo feature that lets you collect your thoughts and act wisely during all this chaos. In Gremlin Tales, defeating the trainers. Everything Gremlins get back up when knocked out and they heal over time. Trainers do not heal over time and do not get back up. If you or your opponent loses all their health, the other trainer wins. So all this dodge rolling I mentioned before is pretty important. In Gremlin's Tale, there is a lot of riding, but before we talk about that, we're going to go through on foot traversal and exploration. The main objective is Gremlin's Tales to return books you owe to the Grand Library where they're mysteriously checked out under your name. You can think of these golden books like Golden Stars or Jiggies and other classic N64 and GameCube era collectathons. Collecting them will allow you to get more levels of the game and find more Gremlins. How you get these collectibles? Battling against trainers and exploring with your tra traversal mechanics. Player traversal. You'll have a few options for traversal at your disposal even without your gremlin friends you have basic jump roll combined by rolling and jumping you can go far distance and crossing gaps and moving fast you mix a little too when you roll after you jump we can combine this with our breath of the wild style climbing mechanic actually some fun crossing a large gap all by ourselves we actually do the correct way Ooh. that volume's a little bit high there but Gives you a little example of that. But our gremlins can get us even further, higher, and do it faster. 
Gremlins will all either be rideable or at least have an ability that helps you platform and explore. And the best part of it is they all have unique but simple movement abilities that can be controlled with just one button. Here you can see all these different types. This is one of my favorite parts about the game. Honestly, it reminds me a lot of Monster Sanctuary, but like in a 3D environment. Step forms. Normally in Monster Tamers, much like Pokemon's shiny system, players can find a rare version of a monster with just a different color scheme. Gremlins expand on this mechanic with step forms, like the evil stepsister or stepmother. Step forms, unlike your typical shiny, will feature a new texture, new typing, and a new move pool to boot. This gives the players extra reward for finding one and means that there are way more type combinations in the game to use on your team. Don't worry about what this means for grinding. The late game will accommodate players with ways to get step forms more easily and never transform their gremlins into step forms. Absolutely love this. I've never been a fan of the fact that you have to grind so hard in games like Pokemon or Tim Tim or something like that. I like how it will accommodate you to more easily get this without spending hundreds of hours. You're trying to collect all the different ones. Like, you know, artificially... Um, bloating game time and I like how they're actually different from one another and not just a different color. That's pretty cool. Never Everland. Never Everland it is a magical place teeming with interesting fantasy landscapes and fun characters to talk to and learn about. Magic doesn't always mean good and happy. Here are a few locations teased in the game demo. You see all of these. Much more to come. The game is going to feature at least four themed worlds aside from the arbitrary already playable main hub world so be on the lookout for those updates in the beta never everland as a whole world is an echo of the tales we know from our world coexisting together with multiple instances of themselves copy and pasted through never everland the director a disembodied voice imposes his magic onto the world itself so everything goes exactly according to the script of these tales Gremlins are spawned to embody the most important characters of these stories shades are spawned to fill the gaps of every other character from the stories Gremlins and Shades have no control over their fates of what they do because their lives always play out as the story is written. To explain, we'll take Hal Huff, for example, from Little Red Riding Hood. Every Hal Huff has a granny, a granny that fetch supplies for and look after. Every Hal Huff, no matter what they do, will somehow be faced with a fateful day where they come home to a surprise just like Little Red did. Instead of finding their beloved granny in bed, they'll find a masquerading grandpuff. If they survive, they will inevitably give in to the hunger of their stomach maw and become a grandpuff themselves. Run, ruining the lives of other Howl Huffs. The story will play out as an echo to Little Red Riding Hood for all the Howl Huffs and Grand Puffs in Never Everland. The only way to avoid this is they're freed from their stories, but they can't do this on their own. Humans are extremely rare in Never Everland, but they don't adhere to the director's story loops. They can break gremlins from these story loops by befriending them. And then here we have a little bit of character. You can just see these different character arts and some little blurbs about the characters. And then we have the soundtrack down here, and judging by how loud it was last time, I'll probably not play this for the sake of everybody's ears. But you can come, like I said, there'll be a link in the description if you want to come listen to this to yourself. The platforms, as you can see, will be PC's Windows on Steam. Then they will pr try to get the Switch, and then, you know, consoles, and so on and so forth. We don't have any of the stretch goals unlocked yet, and... These are just various rewards, as you can see here. Don't want to spend too much time going through all this because that I know not everyone is going to, you know, care about the more in-depth rewards. But yes, you can, um, as being made by Big Rat Games, which with no employees, just myself, the owner, I've been mostly solo developing Gremlins Tales, working mostly 80 hours, weeks, for almost two years. At the point of this Kickstarter, I started a game development journey as a programmer and designed my way through undergraduate degree, which is essentially computer science at UF. So, basically, we have a guy here who has been working on this for a very, very long time by himself. And um, he's actually managed to put it together quite a bit. So, yeah, this is... um. The roadmap down here, November 2024 release date. Um, the just funded thing is um, this is if we get the stretch goal roadmap. If it was just barely funded, we're looking at 2026. So, we either way, we can expect regular communication updates from here on. Yeah, there you go. You can see all the general little specific details here and there. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're interested in this game, a link to it and the Steam version where you can wishlist it and download the demo.
It'll be in the description below. Until next time, this is Mothman Bubba signing off. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all next time. And also, please let me know in the comments below if you have any other games you'd like me to see me cover. Goodbye. Have a wonderful day.